Hi, this is Nick Ritter. Welcome back to another cavalry tutorial. In this video, we will be learning the rubber hose walk cycle using cavalry's native tools. This is one of those fundamental skills to open up the doors to character animation. Also, you can impress your friends. So to start, we'll keep our character basic. We'll start out with a circle and then click over here on the rubber hose tool and we'll click it twice. I'll just rename these to body and then we'll go left leg and right leg. And let's make this body a little bit bigger. And let's say we'll make our floor about here. I like using end as the feet and then start as the hips. So I'll drag this one down right leg. So this one will go a little bit further behind. And then we'll take this one as left leg. And this one will go a little further up front. I want them to be walking from left to right, and so I'll need to change the direction of these. When you click on the rubber hose shelf tool, it pulls the rubber hose deformer into your attribute editor. Expand this out, and then all you do is click on this flip button right here. Flip both the legs. The length is looking a little bit off. I'll connect the lengths together to make sure they're the same. And let's pull this down to about here. And then I'm also interested in increasing the stroke. So I'll pull this up to about 40 and we'll pull this one up to 40. Next, I'll go into end on both of these. So the end, start, end, end rotation, start rotation, they're all null objects. And so they have the null properties such as limit position, rotation, and scale. And quick tip, when you click and hold on your guidelines, you can see exactly which pixel it's at. So this one is negative 329. So that's what I'll set the minimum position to on each of these. So negative 329. And then same thing here, limit position, negative 329. So now when I click on the null object, at the center of it goes down to the line, but not past it. And I think I'll make this a little bit longer. Okay. Next I'm going to reorder these so the left leg goes behind the body. And then I think I will color each of these as well. I'm using this cool color palette built in with Cavalry. So for the back leg, which is our left leg, I'll use this darker color. For the body, I'll use this next color up. And then for the right leg, which is the front leg, I'll use this color here. The next thing I want to do is when I click and drag this body, I want the hips to move with it. So all you do is take these start null objects and make them children of the body, just like this. So now when I click the body, move it around, it works. And next up, our character needs some feet. So I'll create two capsule objects. If you're using a cavalry version before 1.1, then the capsule object is only available in the beta version. Uh, you can, however, do this with a rounded rectangle or with a stroke if you wish. Just make sure the pivot point will work. So if you imagine the capsule having a circle on the left, circle on the right, the pivot point is right in the middle of that first circle. Okay, so I will name one of these right foot and the other one left foot, and then so we can make each of these feet children of the rubber hose and null object. Okay, so now that they're children, we can set the position to zero, zero, and that'll center it right on that ankle. Do the same thing here, zero, zero. And then I would also like to change the width here. Set that to 20, and do the same thing here, set that to 20, and then we can set the length of the feet to taste. So I'll connect the feet up so they're the same, and then say so we'll make them about that long. And then we'll color them the same way. So I'll use my foreground color, fill color, and then I'll use my background color on the left foot. Now it's all colored up. The last detail we'll add is a squatch effect onto the body. So we'll open that up, go into the Shape tab, under Deformers, head down to Squetch. Sometimes they call it Squatch, but Squetch. We'll add the Squetch effect to our body. Okay, open up Squetch and we'll dial in our settings here and then set the strength to zero. The strength is what will be animated later. We'll set the pin to the bottom and then we'll look at our squash effect. Maybe like this. I know I've gotten the squash or the stretch when I move this strength attribute and it looks like it maintains the same volume, just going back and forth. And this looks pretty good. So I'll set that to zero and we'll animate that later. So again, we'll just test out the body here. So the foot moves right along, doesn't go below the ground. Same thing with this foot. And then we'll take the body, move it around, and the legs move with it in a inverse kinematic fashion. So there he is. Here's our little walking guy. And I'll name him Gary. 
Okay, the next step is to animate Gary. Just a couple things you'll notice is that we have five basic poses. Each footstep goes through five basic poses. You can start and end wherever you want, but in this case it starts and end with a contact point, the heel on the ground. And this time we're just worrying about the legs here. So they start with the front leg outstretched, the back leg, this is a neutral position here. And as we go into the step, then our body weight leans into it, the knee bends, the foot falls flat, and that's when the body goes down. And then as that foot passes underneath the body, then the body goes up. And then when we get to our next contact point, that's when our body is back in its neutral position. So I'll go through and do a little bit of prep work to make this easier for us. The first thing is setting up another guide layer to indicate where the neutral spot of the body is. I'll, I'll just put it on the bottom here, and then I'll move this guide layer down to the bottom of the feet, and then we'll create some vertical lines at the heels of our feet. This tells me right now where these neutral feet positions are, and then I'll move these as we go. The last bit of prep is uh, it's on the body. I know I want to animate the position, so I'll right-click this and add to Control Center. The control center is sort of a blank canvas to add whatever attributes you would like. And even if I close out the body layer on the attribute editor, the body position still remains in the control center. This makes it a really nice tool to put all of your most used attributes just in one spot. Next thing I'll put in there is the squetch body strength. Uh, but before I add that, I want to rename it to body squetch. And again, you just right click the attribute, select add to control center, and there it is. The next thing is I'll do is the end null on both of the feet. And again, before I add this, I will rename it to, then I'll right click and add a position, click and add rotation. Moving down to my next end node, I'll label this left end, then add my position to the control center and the rotation to the control center. The control center part of this tutorial is very optional. I believe it's only available in the beta right now if you're in a version of Cavalry before 1.1. And I will turn on keyframes to all these attributes. Once we have all these keyframes set, you can come down here and click on this button, which will filter out every attribute except for things that have keyframes on them. Just make sure that you have none of the layers selected, so you can just hold down Control and then click a layer that is selected to deselect, and then you click this button. Otherwise, you'll only see the keyframes associated with that one layer. You'll filter all that out, make sure I can see all my keyframes, and these are all the keyframed attributes we'll be worrying about for this animation. Okay, I will make this a 12-frame animation. So I'll move this down to 24 so we can see better what we're doing. So you select all your keyframes per layer, copy them, and then paste them down where you want them to go, and they will paste wherever the playhead is. This is our neutral pose for our body. On frame six, we'll do the reverse of this. So the left foot will be over on the left and the right foot will be over on the right. And this is where these guide layers come in handy. So I'll move this layer over here and this layer over here. So if we play our animation, we'll see it just go back and forth and back and forth. So now that we have that frame set up, we'll go to frame three, and then the passing foot will lift up, which I believe is the right foot in this case. So we'll take that Y position, and we'll bring it up to about negative 270, and then back into our neutral keyframe. We'll take this last keyframe of our Y movement and just move it right here in the middle. And then over on frame 9, we'll take the other foot and set that position to be negative 270. Take the starting keyframe, move it right to the middle. So now he's taking steps. The looping is not playing too great. You can either set your composition to be 12 frames, or you can go to the 12 frame mark and press the N key, and that'll set your out point to the end. Holy moly, that's so fast. Let's actually make this a 24 frame animation. Click and drag to select all these keyframes, drag them right over to 24, drag this one over here somewhere, move to the middle, drag all of our middle keyframes and realign them with the middle. And then halfway between zero and 12 is six, and then halfway between 12 and 24 is 18. Much better timing on the animation. What we're doing right now is blocking in the animation. So we're worrying about timing, about spacing and relationships, and we'll get to the fancy stuff like curves and all that a little later. Add on complexity as we go. The other aspect about picking your foot up is that your foot typically rotates down towards the ground. Now take this right foot and rotate it down to negative 100. And then we'll do the same thing on frame 18 with our left foot, negative 100. 
And then just like we did with picking up the foot, we'll drag the final and beginning keyframes of our rotation parameters. And if we play that, now we have a foot that bends as it gets up off the ground. It looks a lot more natural. All right, next thing I want to do is animate the body's up and down movement. We have it at its neutral, and I'll set another neutral keyframe right here. So that's when the feet are just flat on the ground. But if you remember, as the foot passes underneath the body, that's when the body moves up. So we can set that to 200 and 200. I think I'll move the position Y down at these more neutral spots. So 142 there and 142 here. Let's play it through and see how it looks. A little weird. And uh, OK, that's because our last keyframe should be the same as our beginning. So another 142. And we'll play this through again. And it's feeling more natural, albeit very stiff. You can do these in any order you want, but the last piece I want to add in is our body squetch. So the idea being that as the foot makes contact with the ground, the squetch increases. And then as the body moves away from the highest point, it increases. So we go negative numbers here. I'll copy that keyframe there and there. Okay. So right as the body makes impact, there's no squetch yet, so I will set a neutral keyframe, so 0%, and then go forward maybe three or four keyframes, and we'll go up to maybe 40%. And the hope is that it'll look like it's squashing as a result of the impact with the ground. It's like the body wants to keep going. Okay, it looks like it's reacting to something. We'll go to the middle point and go forward a couple of keyframes and then set this Squitch strength to about negative 30. So same thing here. And if we hit play. So this is looking a little funky. If I move this keyframe over and this keyframe over, this keyframe and this keyframe, that might fix it. Okay. That looks a lot more reasonable. So we have our basic animation. We have our secondary follow through animation with the body. Uh, last thing I want to add on is I want him to walk heel to toe rather than dragging his toe along until he gets his heel down on the ground. To do that, at the impact point, which is these neutral positions, uh, that's where we'll set the rotation of the impact foot, which will be one on the far right for us. Okay, so left foot, turn up like this, about 14 degrees, do the same here, 14 degrees, and the same at the very end. And then let's say about two frames after that 14 degrees, we set it back down to zero. And we'll do the same thing on the other foot as well. So we'll go to frame zero, the other foot, we'll go to the impact point, which is right in the middle, and then move two keyframes to the right and set that rotation back down to zero. So now as we play it, our feet feel like they're more snapping into place. So now the final bit of animation, which is dealing with the graph editor. Now the first thing I'll look at is position X, both of our feet. So we'll hold down control or command and then select both of those X positions. Click on the graph editor and we can select all of these keyframes and click on this Bezier interpolation button right here. So the back and forth left to right animation of our feet, it should feel smoother now. And then let's go ahead and add that to our body as well. So we have position Y, select all of these, click on the Bezier interpolation curve, and then we'll make that just a little less intense. So starting to smooth out. Next thing we'll look at is position Y on both of our feet. I have to find it. Okay, there we go. The thing with position Y is that we want the foot to come up and then it obeys gravity, comes back down. But as soon as it hits the ground, we're not slowing to a stop. It's just stopping on the ground. So we'll take these top keyframes here, click the Bezier curve, and then let's see how that looks. Ooh, got some swagger. Uh, watch how the feel of that walk changes as we make this curve a little less intense. A little bit different feeling. Uh, I think I liked it a little bit more extreme though. And then let's look at our rotation attributes. These are a little less symmetrical, so to speak, but I will start by selecting all of them, clicking on the Bezier interpolation, and then make that much less intense, except for the bottom keyframes. I like those being a little bit bigger. And we'll select our top keyframes and uh, deaden those out a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and watch that, see how that feels. The last thing to smooth out with our curves is our body squetch strength. I will select everything, click on the Bezier interpolation, ease up on the curves a little bit. And then you'll notice that we have this sort of like stair-steppy effect. Typically that's not a desirable effect. 
it can cause the animation to feel a little stilted. So what we'll do here is select all of these middle keyframes and then change the curvature so that it feels more like it flows into the next curve rather than trying to be its own little moment. Now when we play it, uh, it feels super smooth. So there we have it. We have a walk animation. And if you need this to cycle on and on, I'll show you how that's done. Change this to 240. Come out to our time editor. Let's select all of our layers. We can right click and click on always visible. So that'll make sure that all the layers that we want to stay visible forever will just stay that way, even if you change the length of the comp. The animation currently stops right after the end of this last keyframe. So what you can do is select our keyframes, go into the graph editor, and then you can click on looping. And so you can go through each attribute individually, or you can select all of our attributes, uh, zoom out a little bit, click and drag to select all, and then just hit this uh, loop button, and that'll loop everything out for us on into the eternities. So now our 240 frame animation, we'll hit play. Uh-oh, something's going on. So here's here's the funny thing with looping it, is if you loop it from, then you need like a, a final keyframe to say, this is the end of this whole cycle of the animation. So to do that, just go through, and each of these, it doesn't have a keyframe here on frame 24. Copy the last keyframe and paste it to that spot. And then same thing with the beginning. So we'll go to the beginning, copy this keyframe and paste it. So now when we press play, it plays our animation just fine. Don't you just feel so proud of Gary for learning to walk? I would love to see your versions of this walking cycle. Feel free to post a link to your own walking animation down below, or if you're on the Cavalry Discord, there's a playground page, and you're welcome to post your own walking cycle on that channel. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.